Welcome to our new moon forecast for March 2020. Our new moon is occurring in Aries on March 24th at 4.29 a.m. United States Central Standard Time. For this new moon forecast, I will be using the Morgan Greer Tarot. I will be pulling four cards, speaking about them individually, and then speaking about them all together. We're asking that our ancestors, our spirit guides, and our guardian spirits are here with us, surrounding us, and protecting us, and assisting us with the guidance, the messages, and the information that we most need at this time in order to best traverse the energy of this new moon in Aries, March 2020. We ask that the information comes through to us in a way that is clear to me and in a way that is clear to you. What is the guidance we most need at this time for this new moon? The first card is going to be the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords tells us that this is a time for healing. It tells us that everything that is happening now is conspiring and coming together for the purpose of leading us into a smoother, more tranquil, more peaceful time. We have smoother roads ahead, but first we need to focus on the healing. The time surrounding this new moon is for the purposes of healing and leading us upon smoother roads, a smoother path forward. What is the next card for the guidance for the new moon in March 2020. It is the chariot. The chariot reminds us to stay focused on what is most important to us, to stay centered, to stay, stay strong in our willpower, strong in our minds, to stay true to ourselves, to not allow ourselves to become distracted by outside forces. Outside forces may be attempting at this time to pull us off of our own unique path, to pull us out of vibration, to pull us out of connection. It is our task now to stay grounded, to stay centered, and to stay on our own unique path wherever that may be, whatever that may look like to us. We are all in different places on our path. We are all in different places in our connection. It's most important that you stay true to yours and on task and on focus in alignment with your path, your purpose at this time. There may be opposing forces that attempt to pull you off track. The next card is the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords speaks to us about disappointment. It speaks to us about um, devastation in some ways, about betrayal, about um, feeling as if people or the world or circumstances or situations are against us. It tells us that we're only human and that sometimes we have to accept our defeat. What does this mean in everyday terms, accepting our defeat? It means that we have to accept that things change, that things shift, that everything won't always work out the way that we hoped that it would or that we planned that it would or that we projected that it would. Sometimes we have to be flexible and we have to accept that we're not always in control of the outcome. We have to release our attachment to the outcome. We have to release our control issues. We have to surrender. If we are adaptable in the first place, if we are not putting up resistance at this time, then we are much less likely to feel this way. We're more likely to feel this way when we are trying to control things that are uncontrollable. This is a time to be flexible so that you can avoid feeling this feeling from the Ten of Swords. What is our next piece of guidance for best traversing this new moon in Aries occurring on March 24th, year 2020? The last card is the Fool. The last card is the Fool. The Fool is a beginning and an ending. The Fool is zero. The Fool is nothing and everything. The Fool reminds us to embrace our human mysteries. It reminds us to embrace our humanity. It reminds us to be okay in not knowing, 
to know that we don't have to know everything. It reminds us to be okay in our simplicity. It reminds us to laugh at our human experience. The fool guides us back to ourselves and tells us that the truth of our own experience is a unique truth onto us as individuals, as individuals with individual perceptions. The fool tells us that the more we embrace our ignorance, the more we embrace the fact that we are mere humans, that we are only co-creators rather than a creator. The more we embrace our limitations as we are here in physical bodies in the physical world, the happier we will be, the more we will actually grow, the more we will understand, the wiser we will become. If we always accept that we have these limitations, that there are unseen things that we cannot understand, that we cannot fathom, if we understand that everything can't be understood logically, mentally, psychologically, practically, analytically, then we will develop a deeper, more profound, more genuine knowing that lives within our hearts, that lives within our bones, that lives within our bodies. We will become wise and rich in a way that we cannot when we are seeking to analyze, to plan, to map out, to control. The fool takes us back to ourselves and tells us that we're perfect the way that we are and that the most important thing we can do in order to lie within that perfection, in order to attune to ourselves and attune to the connection we have with the universe, which is the source of our perfection, is to accept that we are limited is to accept that we will never know everything, we will never understand everything, and to release our resistance, to release our need to control, and to just be with who we are and what we are here on this earth as spirits in a human body. Looking at this reading all together, looking at these signs all together, I'm seeing that we are being led towards healing. We're being led towards healing for the purposes of living smoother, happy, more tranquil lives. But we are in, we are vulnerable. We're in jeopardy to being thrown off of our path of healing. We are vulnerable to being distracted by outside opposing forces at this time. And if we allow ourselves to become distracted, to become disconnected with our healing, to become disconnected with our own paths moving forward, then we are at risk to face depletion. We are at risk to face um, a feeling of betrayal, a feeling of loss, a feeling of heaviness. But our purpose at this time is to go with the flow. Our purpose at this time is to accept how things are unfolding around us and to be adaptable to how they are unfolding in our lives. Our purpose is to bend like a reed in the wind, as Rumi said. Our purpose is to remain in tune with any areas where we need healing, where we need unearthing, where we need restructuring, where we need reevaluating to ascertain what is our true path, our true aligned path moving forward and to do the work that we need to do for ourselves, the work that we need to do in conjunction with our priorities, in conjunction with what is significant to us the most at this time in our lives. Our lives are being restructured for the purpose of aligning us with our real purpose, with our real meaning. It's time now to ascertain how we spend our time, how we spend our energy, and how would we like to spend our time and our energy. It's time to get aligned on our path and to remove ourselves from things that distract us from that path. Get down to the bare bones at this time. If we are putting up resistance to the changes that are happening in our lives, if we refuse to be adaptable, if we are trying to control, that is when we are going to become vulnerable to being depleted, to feeling destroyed, to feeling toppled and trampled. 
Instead, we are to look at this as an adventure, as an adventure that we can't possibly understand at this time. And we are to accept the mystery, accept the lack of understanding, accept our limited perceptions, accept where we are right here, right now on our journey, and know that we are being led to a better place. We are being led through our own healing to smoother, tranquil, peaceful times and an easier path ahead. Many blessings.